So here we are, Apple has now completed the transition to Apple Silicon. And when they started this transition nearly three years ago, I don't think anyone could have predicted what the modern Mac lineup would look like here in 2023. And I don't think anyone was expecting that this small little box would become the de facto Pro Mac desktop for so many users. But here we are because the Mac Studio isn't dead. It's alive and well, and the M2 Max base model might be the best Pro Mac that Apple has ever created for most users. Just like Trend Micro has created the ultimate premium security suite to protect your personal privacy. And I do mean ultimate because Trend Micro has you covered from every angle from cybersecurity threats. And you bet they got viruses covered with Trend Micro's antivirus, which can quickly scan your computer for viruses already on the system, but also more importantly, scan for real time threats when you're browsing the web, which helps me stay one step ahead of those cyber criminals. But you need full coverage security, which is why Trend Micro also has mobile security. And this helps me tackle security threats on the go just as easily and also recommends good security practices with a one tap security scan. So even if you're new at this, you'll know exactly what you need to cover. And it's loaded with features. A few of my favorites are the calendar guard, which blocks suspicious calendar appointments or links from popping up in your calendar app, a Wi-Fi checker to check if your current Wi-Fi connection is secure. That's very important nowadays when you're hopping between Wi-Fi networks from the airport to the cafe and also built-in safe surfing that instantly blocks on safe websites, trackers, and allows you to instantly turn off annoying ads with just a tap, that's worth it alone, right? The suite also comes with Trend Micro's ID security, which is constantly monitoring your most important accounts, like your email account, your banking account, your credit cards, your social security number, and more to see if they've been compromised in a dark web leak. Tools like this can help you quickly take action when your personal data is leaked, whether it's on the computer or on your phone or honestly, the entire web, Trend Micro's premium security suite has you covered. To learn more and to protect yourself, click the link in the description. And thank you to Trend Micro for keeping my data protected and also for sponsoring this video. Okay, so what's new here with the 2023 Mac Studio? Because like most of Apple's modern Macs, if you take last year's version and put it right next to the current version, you wouldn't be able to spot the differences because all of the differences are internal. Now, the 2023 Mac Studio goes beyond just a more powerful chip. That's because there's a few other changes in here as well that make this overall a much better product. First is the addition of a faster HDMI port connection that can now drive 8K displays at 60 hertz or 4K displays at 240 hertz, which is much improved from the last Mac Studio, which shipped with a pretty standard uh, 4K 60 hertz uh, HDMI connection last time. It was actually pretty disappointing when that shipped because the HDMI 2.1 spec uh, was already out at that time. So the last Mac Studio should have had this faster HDMI port. Thankfully, the newer 2023 version does. Speaking of displays, you can now drive up to five 5K displays at once on the Mac Studio, where the previous version was limited to four displays. Now, I don't have five, you know, 5K displays sitting around here, so we're just gonna take Apple's word on that one. But if you're the person sitting there and you're like, I need to hook up five 5K displays, uh, number one, you can take me out to dinner. I, you know, I won't complain. You obviously have more money than me. And number two, good on you. You're doing well in life. Let's all give, let's all give Jim a round of applause. Thank you, Jim. Good job, Jim. Another connectivity bonus, which I think more people will be able to use than five displays, is Bluetooth 5.3 and Wi-Fi 6E. Now, I really haven't noticed a difference in Bluetooth connectivity, which is to say everything worked just as fine as it did on my M1 Mac Studio. I never had Bluetooth problems on that. But I can say that the faster Wi-Fi 6E speed is much faster if you have a Wi-Fi 6E router available. Another small and less advertised tweak to the M2 Mac Studio is that the cooling system was revamped. Not that the Mac Studio had a bad cooling system, but the original one always ran its fans at a constant higher speed, which some people could audibly hear in quiet rooms. This new M2 Max model has kind of fixed that constant uh, fan noise and I guess it now just runs pretty much whisper quiet most of the time. I certainly did not hear a peep out of this machine during the entire time I was using it uh, for this review. Other than that though, it's the same box design with the same port selection that was available on the first M1 model. The biggest difference being that uh, this now does come with the M2 Max chip in a small but powerful desktop machine. 
And how well does that M2 Max chip perform? Because the M1 Max in the last model was already pretty good. Well, in CPU performance, you can expect about a 12% improvement on single core performance with an even bigger jump in multi-threaded CPU performance resulting in around an 18% improvement over the previous M1 Max chip. Now, while performance gains are nice, a 12 to 18% improvement doesn't sound like a major upgrade. Like if you have that older M1 Max model, you don't have to run out and upgrade to this model. Uh, but the real strength of the M2 Max chip actually comes from the GPU, which it seems Apple focused the most on in these chip gains. My favorite example to showcase this is that, remember, this is the base level Mac Studio I'm reviewing. So it does come with a weaker 30 core GPU as opposed to the full 38 core GPU, which is an additional $200 upgrade uh, for the Mac Studio. However, if we look at last year's M1 Max Mac Studio with the full 32 core GPU, again, that's a $200 upgrade on that previous model, you're gonna notice a huge improvement because you'll see that when we're running the shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark, that base level Mac Studio outscores that 32 core M1 Max pretty handily. A 17% performance jump from the base level model against the previous highest end Max chip at the time, the $2,200 model. So yes, this Mac Studio is still an excellent Mac that has now gotten even more powerful to the point of where it can beat the previous highest end M1 Max version for CPU and GPU related tasks, making it obviously a much better value if you're buying it this year. For me, that means yes, this Mac Studio is still an excellent video editing machine for my channel. I swapped out my M1 Ultra Mac Studio and honestly, it was very hard to tell the difference uh, when using both of these Macs. Like if you switch them on me, it, it would take me a while to notice. Obviously the M1 Ultra is still faster for multi-threaded CPU and even for GPU, but, uh, Things like opening up apps or just the general responsiveness of the system actually felt faster on the M2 Max version, I believe due to that higher single core performance than it did on my M1 Ultra version, which the base model for that was $4,000. So it's nice to, it's, it's kind of nice. Like you buy the new Mac Studio, you waited for like the next generation of it, and you're just getting a much better product. And I'm sure that with your own professional workflow, you're probably going to find that the base level Mac Studio is super, super fast. And if you're running on an older Intel Mac and you're thinking about making a jump up to this pro level computer, even at the base level, I am telling you, it is going to make a world of difference. Now, I don't wanna bore you with benchmark after benchmark. That's what a lot of my other videos are for, but I think these benchmarks did help illustrate that even though uh, this is mostly a spec bump upgrade. The Mac Studio, again, it's, it's delivering more value than last year's model. And that's what I kind of wanted, right? Like, let's be honest, this is a boring update, but I'm glad that it's a boring update. I'm glad that Apple is deciding to update these computers on a year to year basis on like their previous forte into pro computers where they let these things linger for years and years until they become such a bad value that eventually even Apple's embarrassed and they go, okay, it's, it's time to upgrade these computers. Thankfully, it, it seems like with Apple Silicon, we're getting uh, more regular updates to the pro level computers. And let's be clear, there is a more exciting version of this computer that comes with the M2 Ultra chip. That chip is actually new because don't forget the M2 Max chip isn't new. It was introduced in January on the new 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros. But I wanted to take a look at the M2 Max model because I think that's the one that most people are going to buy. So yeah, there's a lot of things I told you in this video that isn't necessarily new news, right? Uh, Multi-threaded CPU performance is impressive on the M2 Max Mac Studio. It's very fast, but don't expect any miracles here when it comes to performance over Apple's 16 inch MacBook Pro with an M2 Max chip in it. They both perform very similarly. Maybe the M2 Max in this runs a little bit cooler because you have more cooling, but, but for the most part, the performance should be about equal. But at the same time, I am not downplaying the performance here in this computer. I think the real strength of this base level Mac Studio is just how much more value it delivers over the MacBook Pro. The 16 inch MacBook Pro is $3,099 for the same $2,000 base level configuration as this Mac Studio. That's for the same chip, the same storage, and the same memory configuration, resulting in a $1,100 savings over that laptop if you were to pick up the Mac Studio instead. And it's those little additions that start to add up into something more, right? You get little bits of improvements to the performance. You get a little bit improvement to the connectivity of the ports with like the HDMI. You get a little bit faster Wi-Fi speeds. 
and you get a little bit more versatility in how you spec out this base model. And you get a really small, versatile little box, and that is what I've always liked about the Mac Studio. In fact, I've always dreamed about owning a computer like this Mac Studio. Like, I've always looked at something like a really old computer, the Power Mac G4, or maybe even something more modern like the 2013 Mac Pro, something that could be small and mighty. But previous attempts at this were always kind of failures for Apple. But for the first time, I think that the Mac Studio for them was a tremendous success. I have been using my M1 Ultra model for over a year now, and it is hands down the best computer that I have ever owned for a mix of ease of use, performance, and all packed into a small package that can fit right under my monitor, take up very little space on my desk, almost like, you know, the same benefits you would get from using an all-in-one. This is kind of like the replacement in a way for the 27-inch iMac. And let's acknowledge that because before, I would probably have used an all-in-one, but Apple is taking a different approach here uh, than they have in the past. We no longer have products like the iMac Pro, a $5,000 Pro all-in-one, and we no longer have cheaper alternatives like the 27-inch iMac, which so many pros and prosumers use. But instead, I think we're getting something better. We have Apple's most robust standalone desktop lineup, maybe ever, with two versions of the Mac Mini capturing the entry-level and prosumer markets, the Mac Studio hitting that nice middle ground for an affordable Pro machine, and we still even have the Mac Pro, which I guess still has its places for some users who want some form of expandability in a desktop tower, but honestly, it's becoming apparently clear that it can't really stand up to the value of the Mac Studio, and it's why this, in my opinion, is the true Mac for Pro users, and the base level model is a worthy investment for anyone looking for a small-sized powerhouse. All right, let me know in the comments below, what do you think of the new Mac Studio? If you like this video, don't forget to leave me a like. If you wanna see more, make sure you're subscribed, and I will catch you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.